Hello everyone, hope you all are good. I'm absolutely delighted to be presenting this uh, webinar on mining published tape for language patterns, collocations and chunks. Uh, let me introduce myself first. I'm Dr. Muhammad Ibrahim Ansari. Uh, I have a PhD in English literature. I've done CELTA as well as uh, DELTA modules 1 and 2. I've also uh, done train the trainer here at the English Language Institute, King Abdulaziz University. First of all, let me walk you through an overview of this webinar. So there are different stages like uh, principles of lexical approach, activities from listening text, activities from reading text, then we will do uh, recycling of what we do before it and then we will take a look at the summary of the whole presentation and then uh, you will see references at the end. Here we have an aim of uh, this uh, webinar. Explore how to help students notice patterns, collocations and chunks using examples from Unlock 3. Uh, it's a textbook that actually I teach here at English Language Institute, King Abdulaziz University. So I've got some extract from the books that I teach here. Here is a, a small task for you. It's based on principles of lexical approach by Michael Lewis. So you have to go through the definitions of uh, principles of lexical approach and certain words are missing. And uh, you also have a, a clue there. So you need to uh, look at the clue and think of the word that you can uh, supply there in order to complete the definitions of uh, principles of lexical approach. As you can see here, L means language. The language consists of grammaticalized lexis, not lexicalized grammar. Number two, instructions need to ensure that learners focus predominantly on meaning. So here the focus is on meaning. Number three, the grammar of vocabulary dichotomy is invalid. Much language consists of multi-word chunks. Okay, so again, uh, the main priority here is to focus on chunks of words. This is what we use. And when we have lots of chunks, it helps us in yeah, uh, speaking language fluently. Number four, a central element of language teaching is raising students' awareness of and developing their ability to chunk language successfully. As we know, uh, we have to make our students autonomous. In order to make learners autonomous, it's very important to raise, raise their awareness. If they know how to learn language on their own, it's of great advantage to them. So this is what we do here. We have to create awareness how we have to make them notice, you know, uh, grammatical patterns or the chunks of the language. Number five, collocation is integrated as an organizing principle within syllabus. Yeah, so collocation plays a major role. If your students are not able to use collocation appropriately, you know, he's not able to express himself clearly. And, you know, uh, there will be a problem of accuracy. Number six, successful language is a wider concept than accurate language. So somebody is able to speak language accurately, but maybe has a problem with fluency. So if you want to gain fluency, it's very important to, it's very important to improve your collocation. If your collocation is correct, it helps you become fluent. You express yourself, you know, uh, clearly and without any difficulty. Number seven. The observe hypothesis and experiment cycle replaces the present practice produced. So now PPP method is uh, used everywhere because you present the language, then you help the students practice and then they produce something on their own. So they use the language productively. Or I'll show some activities that you can do from the listening test and later on from the reading test. Have a look at the listening text first. Here is the text that I have taken 
from the listening script okay i've taken it from unlock 3 uh, listening and speaking uh, strand uh, it's on uh, page 202 what i've done is i have removed important collocations as you can see i blanked out here in one two and three the students have to listen to the tape script you know carefully and they have to come up with the collocations that are missing out so as you can see here i had blanked out climate change so they 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 had to listen to the tape script and they had to get collocations like uh, climate change human threats and endangered endangered species so you know it helps in two ways number one they are focused on what they have to listen to and second they have to find collocations that are missing out from there so if you you know design tasks like this students are bound to pay heed to what they are actually listening otherwise they won't be able to find collocations that are, have been blanked out now next task that we can do in order to focus on collocation is like uh, collocations like this climate change human threats endangered species industrial development reduce contact now we have to help students notice what kind of grammatical pattern is found here let me give you an example if you look at the first example warmer temperature so here warmer is an adjective and temperature noun so basically here you have grammatical pattern of adjective plus noun now students have to look at other collocations and they have to come up with the pattern whether they follow adjective plus noun or noun plus noun pattern so please take a look at the pattern in the collocation and try to find out uh, parts of a speech that they are combined with as you can see here climate change here noun plus noun the climate is noun change is also noun so it's kind of compound noun human threads again human is noun and threat is also noun so same pattern noun plus noun if you look at three endangered species now here endangered is an adjective and a species noun industrial development now adjective plus noun industrial here is an adjective as we know al is a suffix which is an adjective marker so you can easily make a guess most of the words ending with a are adjective such as social economical electrical mechanical and so on and so forth look at number five here reduce contact yeah it's a verb plus noun so reduce is a verb here and contact now reduce contact so if you help students notice grammatical patterns they can learn certain things on their own and you know they take note of different structure which they are going to you know just uh, ignore but if you help them uh, with exercises like this you are creating awareness how to look for patterns in the structure now I'm going to uh, show how you can, you know, use reading tests for collocation. I mean, uh, instilling in the students awareness for uh, collocations in the reading text. Again, I've got this uh, reading text from Unlock 3, reading and writing a strand, page 111. So, I give this text to students and students have to read the text, they have to go through the text and they have to circle the linkers that are used in the text. Also they have to underline fixed or semi-fixed expressions used here in this text. You can ask students to just uh, circle linkers and underline fixed expressions. As you can see here, you, all the linkers are circled like although on the one hand while next 
such as finally in conclusion in my opinion if you want to help students you know with categorization of linkers like uh, here we have different types of linkers so can you think of uh, uh, what kind of linkers do we have like although is a linker of uh, contrast on the one hand is also a linker of contrast yeah finally is a linker of conclusion in conclusion is also linker of you know uh, conclusion in my opinion when you give opinion and so on such as can be uh, used you know when you're giving examples so you can you know design another task to ask them to categorize different linkers depending upon the context and as you can see I have underlined all you know uh, fixed and semi fixed expression that we use in many contexts so if students have you know, uh, semi or, you know, fixed expressions like this, it helps them in expressing themselves fluently because they have got, you know, they will be able to collect lots of, you know, phrases or expressions like this, which help them in, you know, expressing themselves freely and quickly. Native speakers are able to, you know, express themselves clearly and easily because they have thousands of expressions in their mind like this. So, as a non-native speaker, we need to, you know, collect, you know, expressions like this in order to become fluent speakers of English, in order to become competent speakers of English. There's another task that you can design on this. You can ask a student to pick out five phrases of expression to say something with emphasis from the reading text. Like, if you can ask a student, you know, suppose if you have to say something with a lot of emphasis on it, or you have to say something, you know, emphasizing on certain items. So, they will go to the text and they will find expressions that help them emphasize certain things. That help them, you know, uh, put accentuations on. So, these are the phrases or expressions, yeah, that are used to say something with a lot of emphasis. Like, many people insist that, many people strongly believe that, the strong arguments, individuals have to take more responsibility, individuals and governments must both take action and so on. Now, it leads us to another task. You can ask them to use these expressions uh, to say something with a lot of emphasis in different situations, in different contexts. So, Expressions are given, now they have to use in, like, think of a few activities to use the above expressions, expressions that are given there. Think of a few situations where students can use the above expressions outside of class. So, if they understand very well, and if they are able to use these expressions in different contexts, it deepens their understanding, and also they are not going to forget it. They will be able to use these expressions in different situations. And if they do so, it will help them, you know, have the information from LTM, from STM to LTM, from short-term memory to long-term memory, because they are able to use it, you know, uh, in their own situation. So if you use expressions in your own situation, from your own mind, then you, you tend to remember better. So it leads them in retaining the information that they have. Now, we can recycle collocations that we have done so far. So, we have a task here to use a uh, collocation that we have learned in another task here. For example, you can ask one student to come in front of the class and he gives a definition and other students will come up with the correct collocation. For example, the building and growing of industries for an economy, it would be industrial development. Now, students will uh, just uh, continue giving definitions. Uh, one student will continue giving definitions, another will make a right guess with the correct collocation. Like the building and growing of industries, industrial development, a long term change in the average weather conditions, thus climate change, a type of animal or plant that might stop existing because there are only a few that type alive that's endangered species, limit or avoid getting in touch or putting something at risk because of people, that's a human thread. We can also do it, you know, in reverse. A student gives collocation, 
and other students have come up with a definition. So it can be done, you know, both ways. Now let me give you, let me give you a recap of what we have done so far. So we had a look at uh, uh, Michael Lewis's principles of lexical approach, uh, lexical chunks, and then we designed tasks to help students know its collocations, study their patterns and types, and then they had to uh, note down you know, linkers and pay heed to uh, fixed and semi-fixed expressions. And then finally, you know, uh, they use the collocation that they have learned in different situations. And here you have references. That's all. Thank you so much.